Welcome back, friends. Welcome back to The Corbett Report. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com, and you're tuned into Propaganda Watch. Remember back in October of last year when the Event 201 panel discussed the problem of online misinformation and disinformation spreading about this completely imaginary coronavirus pandemic, like the pharmaceutical companies created the pandemic in order to increase their profits? And the panel, of course, discussed the various ways that they could counter this vile and heinous misinformation, including internet shutdowns, social media censorship, scrubbing websites that are promoting disinformation. But they also talked about the ways that international bodies like the United Nations and WHO could leverage soft power to influence the ways various countries were approaching this problem of misinformation. I think you're right. It's important that uh, the UN and WHO remain very clear. But when they challenge governments directly, they often get into this issue of of sovereignty. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's really important not to have that as the only response. I think it's really critical to think about soft uh, uh, power influence, uh, which is other um, influentials who can call up the head of state, uh, or um, powerful constituencies within those countries. Uh, We've seen this in the context of mobilizing religious leaders in the context of polio. Uh, uh, or specific business leaders where you can soften perhaps uh, a very hard line Mm -hmm. from government um, through um, less, more stealth um, uh, um, entry points rather than uh, trying to punish them through the international health Mm -hmm. regulations or something like that. And remember way back at the start of the plunge into the real depths of COVID-1984 when Everybody's favorite celebrity, Tom Hanks, went into self-quarantine because he had tested positive for COVID-19 and correctly modeled to everyone how to self-isolate and how to dutifully comply with the dictates of whatever medical opinion he received. Tom Hanks is remaining positive and giving fans an update on his and his wife Rita Wilson's health after their coronavirus diagnosis. On Thursday, the 63-year-old actor shared a photo on his Instagram of himself and Wilson from quarantine in Australia. He captioned the photo by first thanking everyone from Down Under for, quote, taking such good care of us. He says, we have COVID-19 and are in isolation, so we do not spread it to anyone else. He then says, there are those for whom it could lead to a very serious illness, adding, we are taking it one day at a time. He tells his followers, quote, there are things we can all do to get through this by following the advice of experts and taking care of ourselves and each other. He also revealed that going forward, they will be tested, observed, and isolated for as long as public health and safety requires. Extra points if you remember his enigmatic tweet from self-isolation that he was up by 201 points in his game of gin rummy against his wife. And do you remember back in April when the World Health Organization helped organize a gaggle of artists and influencers to put on a benefit concert, the One World Together at Home concert, in order to unite the world behind the message that we must listen to the medical authorities and stay at home? touted as the largest virtual gathering of major artists and influencers since the Live Aid concert in 1985. The One World Together at Home event showcased the who's who of top music stars and celebrities, who came together over the weekend for a special broadcast of music, comedy and personal messages, all in gratitude to those around the world on the front lines of the coronavirus pandemic. So what can we do? We've got to take care of our healthcare workers and we've got to buy them time. By taking care of ourselves. The event was led by the World Health Organization and the nonprofit group Global Citizen. And do you remember back in May when a bunch of celebrities and social media influencers generously agreed to pass the mic on their social media channels to various health experts in order to allow them to lecture us on the importance of following the diktats of the health authorities? So long, Instagram. Bye-bye, Instagram. Farewell, Facebook. Sayonara, Twitter. See you later, followers. The last person you need to hear from right now is me. I'm taking a hiatus. For one day, I'm handing over my account to experts on COVID-19. People who actually know what they're talking about. So instead of hearing from me, you'll be hearing from dozens of experts, like Dr. Anthony Fauci. 
Are you starting to get the feeling that maybe there is a concerted propaganda campaign going on right now in order to use soft power influence like celebrities and social media influencers in order to get the public on board with the dictates of the World Health Organization as filtered through the various national health authorities? Because if that's your feeling, ding, 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 you are correct. Come down and take your prize. Yes, my, uh, my thanks go out to a listener named Bill who pointed out this recent article that passed through the news feeds that I didn't see when it came out um, last week, but it is a pretty important story because it gives us some little window of insight into what's happening. Obviously, a much larger story is at play, but this gives us at least one tiny window that we can see through that shows us what this story is about. It comes from dailycaller.com from last week. World Health Organization hired PR firm to identify celebrity influencers to amplify virus messaging. And this report notes, quote, Amid scrutiny over its response to the coronavirus pandemic, the World Health Organization in early May hired an American public relations firm to burnish its image, including through identifying so-called influencers to help amplify messaging about COVID-19. According to documents filed with the Justice Department this week, WHO inked a $135,000 contract on May 1st with Hill and Knowlton Strategies to craft a public messaging strategy. Hill and Knowlton, which registered under the Foreign Agents Registration Act, proposed identifying three tiers of influencers, celebrities with large social media followings, individuals with smaller but more engaged followings, and hidden heroes, those users with slight followings but who nevertheless shape and guide conversations. The celebrity influencers would be used for greater amplification of WHO messaging, according to Hill and Knowlton's proposal, which was first reported by the Daily Beast. And yes, I will put in the link to the actual document Exhibit A to Registration Statement pursuant to the Foreign Agents Registration Act of 1938 as amended by Hill and Knowlton to register as foreign agents so that they could lobby on behalf of the World Health Organization. And here's the proposal and some of the, the screed of what they were attempting to do here. And there's the contract in black and white and the $135,000 or whatever it was they were spending on this particular contract, which I think we all know is not the whole story. This is not everything, but this is one documented black and white contract we have of part of the social media celebrity influencer campaign that the World Health Organization is using to shape our understanding of the COVID-19 epidemic. And it does seem interesting that they used Hill and Knowlton specifically as the PR firm that they went to for this particular contract. Hmm, Hill and Knowlton, where have I heard that name before? By the 1990s, the post-Vietnam public was growing increasingly wary of calls for war in far-flung corners of the world in countries many had never heard of. And so it was that in 1990, when the politicians and their deep state controllers required the American public to be motivated to wage war against Iraq for its invasion of Kuwait, they hired a literal PR firm to sell an even more brazen set of lies to Joe Sixpack and Jane Soccer Mom. The most famous of these lies revolved around Nayira, a young Kuwaiti girl who sparked international headlines for her shocking testimony before the Congressional Human Rights Caucus in October 1990. In a tear-stained speech, she told a harrowing story of the horrors she witnessed being committed by Iraqi soldiers at a Kuwaiti hospital where she was volunteering. It's the second week after an invasion, I volunteered, volunteered at the al Hospital with 12 other women who wanted to help as well. I was the youngest volunteer. The other women were from 20 to 30 years old. While I was there, I saw the Iraqi soldiers g come into the hospital with guns. They took the babies out of the incubators, took the incubators and left the children to die on the cold floor. It's difficult today to understand just how important this testimony was in setting the tone of the debate about whether America should commit military forces to defend Kuwait. It was reported breathlessly on the evening news, and it was repeated by President Bush on not one or two occasions, but six separate times in the lead-up to war. Babies pulled from incubators and scattered like firewood across the floor. 
And they had kids in incubators and they were thrown out of the incubators so that Kuwait could be systematically dismantled. Then, when the Gulf War resolution was making its way through the House, the incubator story was raised in Congress. Now is the time to check the aggression of this ruthless dictator whose troops have bayoneted pregnant women and have ripped babies from their incubators in Kuwait. And then again in the Senate. The vote passed and combat operations formally began in January 1991. The only problem? Naira was not some anonymous Kuwaiti girl, but, as a subsequent CBC investigation discovered, she was Naira al-Saba, daughter of Saud al-Saba, the Kuwaiti ambassador to the United States. Her testimony had been written for her by Hill and Knowlton, a PR company hired by the Kuwaiti government-supported AstroTurf organization, the Citizens for a Free Kuwait, to help sell the Gulf War. And the Congressional Human Rights Caucus that held the hearing where Naira gave her testimony? It was later found to be a Hill and Knowlton front itself. Oh, that's right, that Hill and Knowlton, literally the same PR firm that sold the lie about babies from incubators to the world to help kick off the first, the first Gulf War, is the same PR firm that the WHO is using to sell its propaganda campaign uh, involving celebrities pimping the COVID-1984 threat. You can't make this stuff up. It's right there in your face. And here, again, I'll include the link so you can go and actually read the document itself. There's nothing conspiratorial about this. It's in black and white. As I say, this is only one, one contract in what is obviously a much larger communication strategy that uh, the WHO helped to wargame out as a participant on that Event 201 panel. But it is, nonetheless, a piece of this important story. And think about this and the various implications of Hill and Knowlton and others who are literally trying to market this COVID-19 threat to you in the same way they would market a tube of toothpaste or a Gulf War. The next time you see a celebrity passing the mic on their social media to some health authority or lecturing us on the need to stay at home or self-quarantine or wear a mask or roll up your sleeve and get your shot. Uh, because you know that campaign is coming too and will probably be orders of magnitude larger than what we've seen so far. Now, if there's anything positive that comes out of this, one, it is the fact that, again, the WHO is acknowledging that people do not trust it anymore. That if go, Again, if you go and read the actual proposal from Hill and Knowlton, you'll see that they're admitting that the WHO has run into credibility issues and the celebrity campaign would help to offset some of that distrust, mistrust that the public has in their institution at this point, which is an apt observation because I think everyone knows at this point there is something seriously shady about the WHO and it's at this point as the U.S threatens to, next year, withdraw its support and funding from the WHO, that would make Bill and Melinda Gates the biggest funders of the entire World Health Organization. Let that sink in. Um, but uh, regardless, there is clearly a big PR problem that they're trying to solve by turning to celebrities. Another, I think, positive aspect of this is that as there has been some discussion generated from my recent questions for Corbett about how to wake up friends and family, there are people saying, well, it's e easier than ever now. A lot of people are seeing through this or there are more, more people waking up than, than we even realize as a result of the craziness that's going on right now. I think one demonstrable sign of that is the distrust and the, the, the lack of, uh, of trust and fealty to celebrities and social media influencers that is uh, observable, palpably observable in today's climate. I think everyone can see this, that to whatever extent that celebrities, artists, musicians, whatever, could even expound upon, let alone actually influence the conversation on matters of world historical import in the past, well, that era is definitely coming to an end rather abruptly as people relentlessly make fun of the ham-handed, stupid celebrity attempts at inserting themselves into any and every ongoing political matter these days. 
uh, as evidence for that, I will simply cite that ridiculous, nonsensical, stupid Imagine mashup with all these celebrities singing at home from their mount- ma- uh, mansions in in the midst of self isolation and quarantine. Oh, we're all in this together. Let's sing Imagine and hold hands and kumbaya and. Meanwhile, people are being put out of work and uh, mass unemployment. The entire economy is collapsing in a controlled demolition as part of the great reset of COVID-1984. And no one's buying it. Everyone is making fun of these stupid celebrities who think that they have influence and think that people care what they say. Most people don't. Don't let the uh, the media convince you that these people actually have clout or that people en masse are listening to them. The vast majority of people do not care at all what these celebrities think. But the WHO thinks they care. And at any rate, well, they have a large social media following. So if they just pass the mic to Fauci or whoever else, right, Julia Roberts, then, hey, we'll, we'll be able to me- um, reach millions of people with our propaganda that way. So... It is an interesting propaganda campaign that's being exposed in real time, but as I say, there is more to come. I guarantee it. There is going to be a much, much bigger concerted push once the vaccine really starts uh, getting put into place. So uh, prepare yourselves and brace yourselves for that and arm yourself with this information. Another handy little tool to have in your info arsenal to unload on people as just another nugget, just another seed that you can spread when you are trying to spread awareness of these issues and how the public is being manipulated, and uh, documentably so. At any rate, that's what we do here on Propaganda Week. Watch week in and week out. And so that's going to do it for today, but I'm looking forward to talking to you again in the near future. James Corbett, CorbettReport.com.